right, and where we left off last time, we had made these two uh, different versions of isopic ramic acid. Well, they're basically the same, but they look slightly different. Uh, this one is the orange brown, and this is the brownie orange. Um, this one, I believe now, that one should be fine. Um, the ready one should be fine. Um, you know, there's a couple of different reasons why it could be a different color. Um, but in the synthesis, I'm going to use this one here, and I'll leave this one for another day. Um, so, they're both worth storing and, and using, I think, in the diazination, but um, I think it's nice that I kept them separate, because they do look quite different. Um, so, we're doing a diazination today. Um, this is this page of the, the, uh, the book we're following. Um, it's... We could run it exactly the same as we did the uh, the ortho DDMP synth, where we uh, run it about 25 degrees and we slowly drip in sodium nitrite to an acidic uh, solution of the cupramate. But instead, we're going to just follow exactly um, as this says, because that's what we're doing in this um, uh, this playlist is following this exactly because um, yeah, why not? Um, and in, in this, we're, uh, we're adding all the nitrites in one one go. We're just going ham at it, you know, we're just going to add all the nitrite. So we're going to have to do some pretty heavy cooling to make it um, work fine, I guess. Because um, otherwise it'll overheat because we're adding it all quickly. Uh, but apart from that, it's pretty much the same. So let's, let's smash it out and I'll, I'll uh, weigh out all the stuff. to uh, pay for the reagents. Um, but finish that. So <laughs> now, um, while I was at work, I checked the sodium nitrite solution in the freezer. So that's very cold. I chucked this in the in the fridge and I've got it now in an ice bath. However, we still need to add 10 grams of crushed ice as per our directions from the synthesis. Um, this serves for cooling, but also to bring down the, uh, the HCl concentration to about 5%, which is uh, pretty much exactly the same as in the other diazonation of the ortho. So they both have the same concentration of HCl, except half the half the water here is in ice, crushed ice, um, whereas the other one just uses strong cooling and slow addition. Um, does the ice really need to be crushed? Well, seeing as everything's already freezing cold, probably not. But truth is, I like using the blender, so we're going to use the blender. Yeah, do what I want. I've added the 10 grams of ice, which is really like one ice block, so I blend it up like 30, so <laughs> it's a bit stupid, isn't it? How much ice I have I? Oh, it's just incredibly stupid to blend up that much ice. Anyway, um, we're now at a position where we can add the nitrite. So we're, you know, at or below zero. We're gonna add our super cold nitrite solution and watch hopefully the colour change pretty much straight away and then we're gonna stir for another 30 or so minutes, and um, yeah. All right, three, two, one. No, I'm just been getting a nitrogen dioxide smell, just faintly, it's very easily detectable, and we've gone up to uh, about 18 degrees, um, which isn't that worrisome, I don't think. Um, should be alright. Um, yeah. I might just... I'll chuck it on an ice bath for now though, for the rest of half an hour, just so it doesn't creep up, because the room temperature is pretty high. At 30 odd, so... Okay, so half an hour has gone past, and we're left with a suspension of sort of golden coloured powder, and which we will filter through our um, filter paper which is in the center because we don't want to filter directly onto the center again because explosives.
Right, time for the all important burn test. Oh, we'll take that as a yes. All right, and here is our final yield of 1.7 grams of Paradidian-P. Uh, 1.79 grams is an 85% yield, which is pretty acceptable for this reaction. Should probably be a little bit higher, but um, we probably just lost it in the wastewater. Uh, it's a pretty low density product. Um, how do I know this? Well, it's because it says it is. Um, in reality, there's really no reason, because in this reference we're following, there's a, a couple of different ways, uh, five in fact, different ways of uh, performing this diazonation. And um, we used one that gave a low density product, whereas there's ones that give high density products. And in reality, there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't really do the, the high density product, because that's a lot better. But I wanted to do this because I wanted to uh, just try the different way of doing the diazonation. Also, um, we're going to recrist both of the DDMPs um, in a future video. Um, so I just wanted to see what the low density product looked like. And it's this lovely golden brown colour. So, um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this synthesis of Para DDMP from Paracetamol, which is actually just over here. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I have anything more to say. Yeah, thanks for watching. I will I will recrist these from acetone. I'll dissolve in the acetone and let the acetone evaporate off slowly, given um, nice crystals, which we'll be able to witness under our microscope to see the difference. Feel free to support me on Patreon if you want to. If you want to get on my wall, you can. And maybe, you know, if you have some better art than this this artwork I've created, like that letter E there, you can, you can put something on the wall. Um, if not, well, just, you know, continue supporting the videos. Thanks, thanks for watching.